How's it going everyone? It is Panjano here and in this video we're going to be covering the Overwatch 2 Ultimate FPS Increase Guide. In this video we're going to be going through all of the necessary settings, tweaks and optimizations you need to know to get the best gameplay experience possible, the highest FPS possible and the lowest input latency on your PC regardless of how old, new, high-end or low-end your PC might be. With all that said and done, let's jump straight into the video after a quick message from today's video sponsor. Gamersubs is a keto-friendly, zero-calorie, zero-sugar, healthier energy drink replacement offering organic caffeine, electrolytes, six crucial vitamins and minerals, and nootropics to sharpen focus and decrease reaction time. And if you don't fancy the caffeine, caffeine-free versions of most Gamersupps flavors are available in 120 serving tubs. Gamersupps is a powdered energy formula that delivers long-lasting energy, increased endurance, faster reflexes, and comes in at a fraction of the cost of a canned energy drink. With 100 servings per tub, averaging 35 cents per serving, with countless flavors, shakers, and accessories to choose from, it's time to ditch the big brand energy drink companies, ditch the extra sugar, extra calories and all of the nonsense and opt for cleaner, cheaper and more diverse energy lineup. If you're not sure where to start, Gamersubs are offering an exclusive free Gamersubs samples pack featuring three flavors with two servings in each pack, equaling six free drinks using the link in the description down below. Click on the link, hit add to cart, you won't have to pay any shipping and you'll have samples arrive to your door completely free of charge so you can try before you buy. If you like the product, consider supporting the channel today using code PANGINO at checkout for 10% off or alternatively using the link in the description down below. And a massive thanks to Gamersubs for sponsoring today's video. We're first of all going to boot into the Battle.net launcher. Go to the top left hand side, click on the Battle.net launcher logo, select settings. Navigate down to general. On game launch, we're going to be switching to exit battle.net completely. It may also be worthwhile navigating all the way down to the bottom and unselecting the option for use browser hardware acceleration. Select done. Navigate down to the settings cog, select options. Go to show in explorer. Inside of here, go inside of the underscore retail underscore folder. Scroll down to overwatch.exe. Right click, select show more options, properties. Scroll up to the compatibility tab at the Stop, check the option for disable full screen optimizations, select change high DPI and override the high DPI scaling behavior at the bottom, select OK, apply and OK. Navigate up to the directory bar at the top. Double click in this blank space. What we're then going to do is go all the way to the end, highlight and select the entire directory for the game, right click and select copy. With the game copied, exit out. Go to the bottom left hand side, click on your windows button, type game space mode. Enter game mode settings, switch the game mode to the on position. With that completed, go to the bottom left one last time, typing in GPU space settings, selecting the graphics settings panel. Inside of here at the top, if you do see the option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, I would recommend switching this on, booting into the training range of the game, trying that setting out. Regardless of that setting, we're also going to navigate down to browse. Go up to the directory bar at the top, select and remove everything with inside of here. What we're then going to do is right click and select paste to paste in the Overwatch directory. Press enter. Select overwatch.exe, add. Scroll down to the application, click on options, select the high performance option, which should be the fastest GPU you have installed then select save. With that completed, exit out. Once you're in the main menu of the game, we need to navigate down to the bottom right hand side to the menu. Inside of here, go to options. Starting off with our video tab, first of all, display mode. Make sure that you are utilizing full screen as this will provide you with the lowest level of input latency on Windows 10 and 11. Next up is resolution. If you already know what your monitor's resolution is, select the monitor's resolution, but also make sure that you are selecting the highest refresh rate, which is the number in the brackets available for that resolution. So like here for me, you can see I have two versions of 4K, one's at 50 hertz, one's at 60, I may also have 120, 144, 165, 240, 360 or higher. Next up is FOV. For the most part, this is personal preference. It will adjust performance ever so slightly, but set this to whatever you're comfortable with. Dynamic render scale is going to be set to off for now, as we're going to set this up later in the video. Render scale is going to be set to custom. Once you've enabled that, in-game resolution is going to be left at 100% for now. Frame rate, we're going to switch off automatic, set this to custom. We're going to be setting this all the way up to 600. Even if you aren't able to achieve 600 FPS, we're going to basically remove the FPS cap from the game currently while we change our settings and if you want to cap your FPS at the end of the video then we can reapply this at the end of the video with our new FPS. V-Sync I would recommend switching off unless you are using a fancy G-Sync plus V-Sync setup, triple buffering off. Reduced buffering is recommended for those of you that are playing that are not GPU bound. But for my recommendation for most of you watching this we're going to be switching this to on. Gamma, contrast, brightness and HDR are all personal preference. Set them up however
however you would like to. Once that's completed, select apply. This time navigate over to graphics quality. Now in this guide, we're going to be reducing most of the settings with inside of here because Overwatch, even at very low settings, still looks fantastic due to the fact that there isn't actually much texture quality inside of the game, meaning we can reduce a lot of the extra post-processing settings for a cleaner and more competitive setup without really reducing the visual fidelity of the game, but providing a massive FPS increase and fantastic latency reductions. High quality upsampling is going to be switched to AMD FSR. If in the future, newer versions of FSR are available, select the latest or highest number of FSR which is available, which at the time of recording this video is 1.0. Image sharpening, we can change this later on, but for the most part, I recommend setting this to about 25, 30%. Texture quality, I'd recommend setting to low, otherwise go with medium at the highest. Texture filtering quality, for the best FPS possible, set this to low, 1x, but for most people, set this to either four or eight. Local fog detail is going to be switched to low to maintain competitive settings. Dynamic reflections are going to be switched to off. Shadow detail is recommended to have set to either low or off. For the best FPS possible, go with off. Model detail should either be set to low or medium. I prefer low. Effects detail, low. Lighting quality, low. Anti-alias quality. For the highest setting with inside of here, I'd recommend going with medium SMAA low, but this will come with a small performance penalty. For the best FPS possible, I'd recommend switching off if you don't mind a sharper looking game. Refraction quality is going to be switched to low. Ambient occlusion is either going to be set to off, but if this does make your image too flat, you could go with low at the highest. Local reflections, off. Damage effects, low. With those settings set up, select apply once again. You'll be notified you'll need to restart the game for them to take effect, and we'll do that in a moment. Head over to details. This is where we can set up a few performance monitors with inside of the game. I'd recommend switching display performance stats on, showing your frame rate, show your GPU temperature, show your VRAM usage, and I'd also recommend showing your network latency. Select apply. Before we continue on with the next game settings and to dial in our settings for our personal preference, we quickly need to restart the game. So press escape, select exit to desktop, yes. Head back inside of the Battle.net launcher, select play once again. For the rest of the in-game settings, we're going to boot into the training mode so we can see them being changed live and try them out so you can quickly and easily decide if you want to keep them or not. For this, head over to play, go to the far right to training, practice range. I'd recommend selecting a character in which you typically play, selecting OK, run around and just find a location inside of the firing range. In the top left hand side, you should now be able to see an FPS counter, the temperature of your GPU, the VRAM in which you're using and also your latency. First of all, press escape, head over to options, video, graphics quality. Make sure that you have high quality upsampling set to AMD FSR at this point. With that selected, head back over to video. We're then going to make an adjustment to our in-game resolution slider because we've enabled AMD's FSR upscaling tech. So we need to be using an in-game resolution less than 100% for that technology to kick in. What I would first of all recommend you do is take this down to 90%. Select apply, press escape to go back into your game. As you can see, going down to 90% hasn't changed my FPS by much. We're still getting about 300. What you want to pay attention to every time we lower this is how the game looks visually. Have a look in the distance, have a look close up. If you're still happy with how the game looks, press escape, select options again, video, lower the in-game resolution further. This time we'll go to 80%. Heading back inside of the game, you're able to see that I'm now getting 350 frames per second just from lowering that additional 10%. Depending on how high or how low your monitor's resolution is will depend on how low you want to go with that slider, but for me at 4K, this still looks absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to go down even further. I'm going to be trying out 65% here, and as you can now see, I'm getting 420 frames per second, and I'm still really happy with how this looks. And just for the sake of comparison, I'm setting this all the way down to 50% now, pressing apply. I can now see a somewhat noticeable visual downgrade to the game, but I'm getting 520 frames per second, and this is still completely playable. For the best settings for me though, I'm going to be setting this to 65%. This gives me roughly 420 frames per second, and the game feels absolutely fantastic. So what I recommend you do is play for a few minutes inside of the firing range, make sure that you are happy with the rendering resolution. If it looks a little bit too blurry for you, up it by about 5% and find the setting which suits you best. It's now time to cap your FPS or leave it uncapped. So head back into the video settings. For me, I'm able to get roughly 400 frames per second at all times now. So I'm going to set my FPS cap just lower than this at 380. And as you can now see when I go into the game, I'm getting a rock solid 380 frames per second at nearly all times. If that does need to be adjusted at any time, you can do so quickly and easily by either upping or lowering the FPS cap or upping or lowering the in-game rendering resolution scale. But if you are someone like myself who wants to get the lowest latency possible, you want to have as many frames as possible, so you want to leave this uncapped or set all the way to 600. Or depending on your hardware, you might actually be capped at 600 and can't go any higher anyway. With the graphics settings all out of the way, here are a few other essential settings you need to make sure that you're utilizing in Overwatch 2. First of all, press escape, head over to options. Go to the top to gameplay. For those of you on low end to high end gaming desktops, it's to navigate down to the bottom and enable high precision mouse input. That will increase the frequency in which the mouse is reporting with inside of the game, giving you faster, snappier mouse movements and offers a much nicer mouse aiming experience. With that applied, navigate over to accessibility. Start with general. Camera shake is going to be set to reduced. HUD shake is going to be switched 
to off and reduce menu movement is also going to be switched to on. If you do want to enable a colorblind mode you can do so with inside of here to change some of the settings with the friendly colors, HUD colors and other colors with inside of the game. So you can select the different filters and the intensity of those filters utilizing these options. Another setting which could be useful which I have seen going around is to navigate over to your control section and go to advanced. Even if you're not using a controller and you're a mouse and keyboard player like myself, doing this can make sure that you aren't experiencing any issues. Start with aim smoothing, turning this all the way down to 0%. If you're also wanting to make a change to the crosshair inside of the game, you can scroll down with inside of here, head to the advanced section under reticle, and you can make your own custom crosshair by adjusting any of the options in this menu. You can then go ahead and apply those settings in the bottom, press escape, and head back into the game. At this point inside of the firing range, make sure that you're moving your mouse around, maybe select some aiming characters and see if you like the brand new settings. And the game's camera should be way more stable. Once we're back at the desktop, we can apply a few more advanced optimizations to the game config by navigating to the bottom left to your file explorer. Head up to your documents, Overwatch settings and opening the settings underscore v0.ini file. Inside of here we're first of all going to start off with high tick input making sure this is set to 1. Next up we're going to be changing the local fog detail to 0. Max effects anisotropy is going to be set to 0. Max extra quality anisotropy is going to be set to 0. And the other settings should be set up from the in-game settings in which we adjusted earlier so yours might not completely match mine but those are the options I would change inside of there. Navigate to the top left hand side, select file, save. At that point I'd recommend booting into a live match just go into to an unranked competitive or arcade mode, get used to your in-game settings, adjust them slightly on the fly if you need to by adjusting the settings which are listed on screen. If you're still not completely satisfied with the FPS in which you are getting, there are a few other options available to you, but they will require you to go down some more advanced routes. For those of you looking to fine-tune your system and get the best FPS possible, you can also check out the Advanced FPS Companion Guide, either on screen now, via the card in the top right-hand side, or linked in the description down below. In that video, we cover a ton of optimizations, all the way from basic Windows tweaks, settings and optimizations, to BIOS optimizations which you can apply, recommendations for CPU overclocking, and advanced GPU optimizations to lower your CPU usage and get the best FPS possible from the GPU in which you have installed. And there you guys have it. That is the Overwatch 2 Ultimate FPS Increase Guide. If you have enjoyed this sort of content, please do consider leaving a like on the video and staying subscribed to the channel to be updated with other guides, whether they be for specific games or overall PC optimizations. Speaking of which, if you are looking to get more out of your games and get the best performance possible on your PC without spending a penny, consider checking out the two videos on screen now.